G'day, it's Stefan Angelini from Angel Advisor. It's the 17th of February, 2023. It's a hot one. And here's the economic update. Today's topics are working from home tax changes, why the AXS is still rising, dividends, soft landing, house prices, gold, China versus the USA, as well as what returns you could expect on $100,000 if you invested it for a long time. I uh, just wanted to let you know that, that this podcast is just general information. If you want any personal advice, please go and speak to a licensed financial advisor. If you think it's time to reassess your investment portfolio or if you've got some cash lying around, you want to talk to someone about it, that's why we exist. Reach out to hello at angeladvisory.com.au and we'd be happy to chat to you. Now, what's been going on? The first thing is probably most important to a lot of people, tax changes and work from home tax changes. It's going to be affected in effect come 1 March 2023. Now, there's a lot of commentary around that they, that um, accountants and the like think that it's pretty silly that the accountants at the ATL is, is implementing something from the 1st of March. So you see a lot of publications start coming out around that. But really, they should be starting at 1 July, if anything. But be prepared. It is commencing 1 March. So basically, what used to happen was you used to just lodge a... 80 cent per hour claim for the hours you work from home. Now they're going to be requiring you to keep a full record of your working from home hours and what your expenses are. So if you don't have an accountant, it might be time to seek one out because the ATO is going to say, no, your new justification is not good enough. Um, there was about 5 million people that claim work from home deductions during the pandemic. So um, you can imagine that this is going to be pretty big. What is the main thing is the ATO is now expecting everyone to keep a record of the time spent working from home and the household running costs. So if you are a work from home person, start keeping your diaries now because from 1 March, it's going to be implemented. What happened around the world in markets? Well, let's just look at Australia. Australia jumped 0.7%, um, mainly off the back of uh, the unemployment rate increasing from 35 to 3.7%. Now, why? Why do you think the stock market would increase when unemployment's increasing? Well, basically, anything to do with inflation easing or interest rates actually having effect will make markets jump. So what it's saying is the rise in unemployment is interpreted by some people by indicating that inflation is going to ease and interest rate rises will stop. And once that stops, markets will kick some goals. Uh, now, just looking at franking credits and if you're a dividend investor, uh, first off, if you're a franking credit, the environment you invest in does matter. I went to an update by a pretty big fund manager yesterday who mainly focused on dividend income. And they are, I guess, they are more than happy to say that they are mainly focusing on pensioners. Now, I'll tell you why. If you have one fully frank dividend or $1 that's a fully frank dividend, if you're in pension phase in super, you will actually earn $1.43. If you're in accumulation phase in super, you will earn $1.21. And that's because your marginal tax rate is 50, your marginal the tax rate is 15%. If you are on the highest marginal tax rate, you actually get around about 75 cents out of the dollar of fully frank dividends. That's your end take home. Now, that is simply because you get that 40, it's 42.8 cents back when you lodge your tax return. So there can be some really big benefits of investing into Australian stocks that pay fully frank dividends because you get so much more back because you get their tax back. Um, in terms of dividend paying stocks, there was a really good, I guess, assessment done by this company that assessed in the in the months leading up to when a dividend is declared and the company goes X dividend, on average, there's actually a sharp run up by about a few percentage points in that stock. And then after it goes X dividend, there's a short run up again. But then the lag in two months later is not as the, the stock does not fall as much as it rose in the in the two months after within as it did rise in the three months before. I know I just messed up my words then, but basically leading to dividend time, you'll see the stocks have a pretty good run up. Um, and that was just really interesting for me. So any out there, anyone out there that's dividend investors, like a lot of our clients, are uh, pretty good to know. In terms of uh, Australia's economy. And soft landing. So soft landing is, you know, will we go into a recession? There was a really great article on the Inside Advisor saying that a soft landing is possible um, after more rate paying from the International Monetary, Monetary Fund. So what it reads here is it says a strong cyclical position and limited economic scarring from the pandemic have, has put Australia in a really great spot 
to have a soft landing. So let's hope that Australia doesn't go into recession and we are cool going through. Let's talk about house prices and more importantly, house listings. Uh, so in Sydney and Melbourne, uh, listings have hit, hit an all-time low. Not an all-time low, but they've been lo really low and, and sort of like the same level they were in the pandemic. And what that means for supply and demand, if there's less supply in the market, so there's less properties on the market, then what that means is it means that there's less supply, which means hopefully prices won't fall as sharply. And what in, to give you a number and to give you some statistics, the number of new listings are tracking 22% lower than their five-year average. So as you can see, less people putting their house on the markets and hopefully that keeps Australia's property market pretty buoyant. In terms of gold and what's going on with the gold market, so wrote the great article by Van Eck asking if investors will follow central banks into gold. So central banks around the world had their, their biggest, second biggest year ever of buying gold, and that was in 2022. So this is the this is the second biggest rec on record since 1950. Um, so why do central banks buy gold? Um, mainly the main reasons are that they see that it performs well during times of crisis. Um, it's a long term store of value, and it's highly liquid, so they can get the money out pretty quickly in the event anything was to happen. So it'd be interesting to see if a lot of investors start to go into gold and gold companies. What's happening around the world? Well, China and the US are fighting. And as you know, that if you've, unless you've been living under a rock, the US shut down, shot down one of China's balloons that entered their system, the Chinese surveillance balloon. Um, and then America sanctioned about 16 Chinese companies that they think were involved in that. And just recently, China has imposed sanctions on two American defense manufacturers over arms sales in Taiwan or to Taiwan. Um, because Beijing has essentially pledged countermeasures in response to the handling of, of the suspected um, surveillance balloons entering their their area. So look, there's some tension growing in that part of the world. Let's hope it doesn't go, it's not too bad. Um, and let's hope a war doesn't break out between those people. Now, money invested and investing into markets for the long term and trying to time markets. Um, great post by Andrew Mitchell. And this one was on LinkedIn. So he's from my fear asset management. If you want some really great content, some really great data, follow this guy um, or follow the, the business. Now his article was, what is the cost of missing the 100 of missing some of the best days on the market if you invest at $100,000 um, in 2002? So if you invested $100,000 in 2002 and kept it until 2021, your 100 grand would be worth $616,000. And if you missed the five best days, that would nearly half. If you missed the 10 best days, you'd only get about 30% of that. And if you missed the 25 best days, You'd only get $130,000 instead of $616,000. So as you can see, even though there are pretty, even though people get scared off by the market, it's important to remain invested because a lot of the times after some of the worst days on the market come some of the best days. So if you missed a lot of those best days, then you'll miss a whole lot of returns. Um, so super important just to keep diligent, remain diligent, keep invested. We know that as financial advisors. Um, and it's just important to remind everyone around the world. Now, um, if you're looking, if you're watching this on a video, I'm sitting at home today. I'm work from home guy. Uh, my wife's going off and chasing her passion. So good luck with that. And good luck to me. I'm taking my one-year-old child to swimming today and she's a nutcase. So I'm really looking forward to that. Thanks a lot. Keep cool. Have a great day and we'll see you next week.